how much does mastering actually improve a mix? Here, I have five very different sessions to show you, starting from the most subtle changes of a mastering session to the most aggressive of changes. The aim of showing you this range of subtle mastering to aggressive mastering is to look at processing decisions, discuss where, how, and why certain changes were made and others might not have been. So let's jump into it. First, I got this session for surname ampersand, and this is the session that kicked off this video idea. And on the same day I was mastering this, I was mastering another mix for the artist Lolitz Lear. And this session was a super subtle mastering session, whereas the other one was very aggressive, a lot of changes in the tone and dynamics because it's what the track called on. So this was super subtle. I'm going to play the before and after and then take you through my processing decisions and probably the main one, which the sound of this. So let's take a listen. So the big change here happens in the low end. Now these are level matched, so because there was a change in the low end, I tightened it, the top end feels a little bit more brighter and open, which is okay. But the main thing I noticed was in this low region, um, especially extending out to the subs, it was a little bit loose. And that wasn't a bad thing. We sort of want that warmth from the track, but it limited how, well, that's a funny word to use, it limited how hard I could push it because what would happen is because that low end was pretty extended, the limiter would work a bit harder. Everything would feel a bit crushed. The dynamics would feel a bit closed up. What I actually might do is I actually might turn this EQ on and off in the chain so you can hear the effect of how that limiting changes based on whether this EQ is in or not. All right, so let's do that. It's just no coincidence. It's just because you avoid what's amiss in the name of trying to make sense out of all of this. Black and white, no gray is what I'm told it is. Like a pendulum that's been stuck in place. I can't think about it. And you can hear that when the EQ is off, that low end crunched into the limiter a bit during this first half. And we'll do that again. But then when I turn it off, it's a lot more tighter, but the low end doesn't crunch into the limiter as much. Take a listen. It's just no coincidence, it's just because you avoid what's amiss in the name of Trying to make sense out of all of this Black and white, no gray is what I'm told it is Like a pendulum that's been stuck in place I can't think of It's subtle, but it's just this one little tightening aspect of the mastering which helps it across the line. Now, did I need to do so much more on this master? And I'll say no, and I'll tell you why. This artist is meticulous. Surname is meticulous on the production quality, on the mix quality, every little detail and note. So I know when a mix is coming in, it is 99.99% of the way there, and they just need me to QC and just, just push it over the line a bit. Just go, hey, is there anything you've missed? And for me, overall, this is an insane mix, a great mix. Actually, I really like the original mix. It's just this little tweak that was needed just to carry it over the line. This one is Coup de Gras by Dugong Jr. Let's have a listen to the before and after. Then we'll go through some of the changes. This is a little bit more pronounced in terms of the change in tone compared to the last session we just looked at. Okay, so this one's a little bit hard to pick up because this is still in the subtle mastering side of changes and I hope you have a good set of headphones or a sub or a big system you're hearing this on because this is all going to be in the sub range where we're doing some interesting little tweaks. They're quite surgical tweaks. Now, I'll do some soloing here of frequencies, but the sustain in the kick drum at around 50 hertz had this slight odd tail to it, and I wanted to clear that up so we could get more punch out of the kick. But that also meant EQing the punch out of the kick with the transit. So I'm using transient sustain mode here in the EQ, and then adding low end focus here. I don't think I did anything on the sustain, just the main transient section, 100 hertz and up. So what we'll do is we'll get rid of the rest of this processing for the interim and just focus on what we're doing here. So I want to solo this frequency first so you can hear how this sort of moves out a little bit of the scope of the, the rhythm, it, I guess is the right word. Just 
She heard it, that sound, got lost in that fly. She like it, like, wow. She nervous, run, cry, she ain't f- So that gives it that knock. Just, just bumping up that 120 hertz in the transient gives the kick drum a little bit more knock. And we want to get rid of that 52 hertz, which is slightly after that knock. It's a bit delayed or late. It's a bit... And we want to get rid of that so it's a tighter, tighter sort of sound there. Just subtly tighter, and that's really important to me for a song like this, right? I know he's going to be playing it out, and you know, you're going to crank it. You're going to crank it a little bit, and when you're cranking it, you don't want that low end to be moving in a funny way. Then I use low end focus just on the transient section from 100 hertz to 250, just to give it a little bit more punch, just a little bit more. Now what I'll do is I'll just turn this whole chain off. This is just affecting the drums, mind you. Off and on. All right, ready? No home for a nice pay to get the shit laid. You might as well stay. I mean, huh. she nervous round cry. She ain't from round time, but love to get down. She heard that that sound got lost in that fly. She like it like wow. She nervous round cry. She ain't from round time, but love to get down. She heard again a subtle change, but this makes a big difference in the feel of the master. And that's the really the only main change I made here. The EQ here is a little bit in the. I've done a similar sort of little bump and cut there to the subs and low end, and then open up the top end. But really, um, it's just the low end that's been changed here. So if we go before and after, now what I want you to listen for is just listen to that low end. No home for a nice pay to get the shit laid. You might as well stay. I mean, she nervous round cry. She ain't from round time, but love to get down, get down. She heard it that sound, got lost in that fly. She like it like wow. She nervous round cry. She ain't from round time, but love to get down. Again, this is what I'm talking about, subtle changes. This is probably a little bit more aggressive than the last one, because the last one was just a simple EQ move. This is quite a surgical move. So th this, this takes it into the realm of a little bit more creativity in terms of mastering. The last one was like, I don't want to fuck with the tone too much. I just need to make the, a little cut, a little boost with an EQ. Whereas this one is very specific. There is a tail in this kick drum which is ringing out a little bit. Let's use an EQ to EQ that sustain, boost up the transient. This is a little bit more intrusive and we're going to move on and get a little bit more intrusive from one session to the next now. Okay, so this next one is Cuff You Up by NSX. I've got level matched mix and the level to the master. Let's have a listen to this before and after. Uh -huh. It should be a crown, got me feeling like this. Let my mind, got me feeling like this. You should do time, got me feeling like this. Guess I gotta lock it down, got you, got you up. It should be a crown, got me feeling like this. Run it through my mind, got me feeling like this. You should do time, got me feeling like this. Guess I gotta lock it down, got you up. I miss it so much. The mix is exceptional, but I just heard things which I wanted to embellish and bring out of the speaker, which I could. I didn't have to correct much in this mix. It was pretty stellar already as it was. So we'll start from the start here. We'll just back that chain off there. So the first one is all those little um, rim clicks in the drums and the hi-hats. I wanted all that detail to come out. So I'm using some upward compression here by Leapwing Dine 1. And I'll just turn this off and on and you'll hear this. Just bring out the transients. Just make them pop out of the speaker a bit more. So what you can see here on the meters is the low end gets compressed a lot, but the top end stays less compressed in parallel. So some of that transient comes out a little bit more, which is that's the sort of effect I'm trying to go for with this. The next one is the two downbeats on the bass. Um, people like this, some people don't. I like it, but I don't use it all the time. It might seem the other uh, otherwise on the channel, but um, this is a really cool stereo harmonic section where you take the mid signal, you add harmonics to the side signal, and we'll turn this off and on, and you'll hear those two downbeats on the kick drum with the bass. It just spreads out a little bit more, which is really nice. I actually might loop it so you can hear the difference 
specifically. It just opens it up a little bit around the sides, which is a nice bit of harmonic texture. The mono signal still sets, keeps its integrity, but we just get a bit of harmonics out of the side from the bass. The next thing was, what we're going to do is we're going to get BX meter up and monitor the side signal. And the reason why we're going to monitor the side signal is there's some really interesting details I want to talk about here. All the perks, all the reverb tails, all that little detail which creates the depth in the mix is out in the sides. And I didn't want to just crank the stereo signal up because you're going to change the um, relative balance between the punch in the mid and the sides if I just make it wider in general. So I've got this plugin patch which I made in um, Meta Plugin. And basically it filters out the top end of the side signal. Okay, filters it out and then we add harmonics to it, okay? I don't know why I crashed, but yeah, we filter out the top end and then we add harmonics. And the idea of this is that by introducing harmonics to the side signal, we just embellish and create a little bit more clarity right in the very top end there. You can see where I'm filtering and adding those, that, those harmonics to. So let's play that through before and after. Very subtle, just a very subtle bit of harmonic air to the side. The next one is probably the most aggressive, but it's something that textually I wanted for this song. Now we've got the very rhythmic sort of pattern, especially in the chorus, where you've got those two downbeats with the kick drum, and then you've got all the little, the little um, rim clicks and hi-hat details. This particular setting on the Diamond Dynamic Saturator, I like the way it takes transients and just grits them up a little bit, gives them a little bit of a, a texture that you can sort of feel. It's a bit rough. It's not the smoothest of, of, of processes, but what it does is it just grits up the fuck out of transients. I don't know a, a more easier way to say it, but take a listen to the, dim, dim, the Diamond Saturator off and on. And you just hear those transients pop a little bit. It becomes, it does become a bit brighter and we have to correct it because it does become a little bit too bright using this setting. But the texture and the transient movement is what I'm after. So take a listen to this. Adds a little bit more texture, especially on those kick drums, just to grit it up a bit. The overall top end changes a bit too much, and whenever I use Diamond Saturate, I've typically got a little cut in the top end afterwards. But yeah, this is a much more aggressive style of mastering. I still believe in this realm, we're in this subtle realm, where we're still keeping honest to the integrity of the original mix, because if we go before and after, we're still pretty close up. Escape it, uh -huh. So yeah, this is a good balance between subtle changes, but that are quite obvious. Um, actually, they're not quite subtle changes. They're obvious changes that embellish what's there. I'm not trying to correct anything. I'm not trying to transform anything far away from the original mix, but there are noticeable changes there to make improvements or Maybe not improvements, I would say, because the mix is solid, but enhancements to what's there. So I'm going to show you this next one. This is where we're going into a territory where we change the tone quite noticeably and choose not to compensate because it adds something. This is um, the Cologne remix by Companion. And let's have a listen to this before and after. My Cologne. So there's a few things. The first thing I hope you pick, I took this from the last session, um, 
this this sort of technique using the diamond saturator just to add texture and this is something I'll typically use on electronic tracks or dance tracks where I do want the downbeat of the kicks to have that texture, to have that drive, to open up a little bit with some transient texture. Um, if I turn this off, the kick doesn't fall away, but it's just too rounded. It doesn't drive enough for at least the sensibilities I'm looking for in the final master. So take a listen. You can hear that texture, which is really important. That little bit of crunch on the top of the, the kick. Not like a digital harsh clipping crunch, but some harmonics around that that transient is really nice. Um, then again, the bass lane pro, adding that width to the side of the kick drum. The meta plugin is a little bit more aggressive on this one because I've got parallel compression, parallel harmonics, parallel filtered harmonics. And we can take a listen to this um, before and after. So the sides come out really wide after that, which is nice. I sort of wanted that because I've got a very consistent downbeat. Having that energy around the sides helps break that up, helps give focus for the listener. So yeah, that's number four. But this last one, which we're going to look at, um, we've seen before in the channel, but this is probably the most extreme. This is as far as it goes. Like some people might say, well, number one to four are pretty subtle changes. But when you hear number five, it's wild. Okay, it's, it's extreme, the change. So let's go have a listen. So what's going on in a session like this? Well, the client asked specifically to reference Radata by Skrillex. Now, this is big, low-end. It's big and expansive. So they opted for stem mastering. I didn't suggest it. The mix was in a position where it was. And I'm happy we ended up stem mastering because where the mix started, which is the before version I played you of, would have been very hard to take it to this after version. I did change the levels of the, the, the bass and the low-end and the kick. I did change the tone of the transients in some of the drum hits, and that makes a big difference. Now, some key sort of things to note here when you're working on a session like this is to get the kick drum and the bass perfect, okay? Like, in terms of level, their fundamentals have to be perfectly, like, tight with one another. And I'll show you a little trick I've learned recently. I didn't do it in this session, but you can do to, to do this. Now... Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up Infrasonic. Now, Infrasonic, in terms of an, a, a visualizer, is incredible, is incredible. Because what I can do is, I'll actually just pull this up over here. Where are we there? For my input. I was using Insight for this, but it's nowhere near as accurate as Infrasonic. We want to monitor where that kick drum fundamental is. So I've got the input monitoring, not the in and out, just the in. So with this, what we could actually do is click on the screen here and it'll pause the input um, spectrogram, but give you an exact decibel reading of where that kick is. So if we, the fundamentals around this 50 to 60 hertz, where a lot of that lowest fundamental energy, the kick's coming through. So what we can do is we can click it at the top and we know that's peak, it's about negative 44. All right, you can see that on the left over there, negative 44. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that and we're going to play the bass and get the bass leveled to the exact same point. And that is our starting point. So now take a listen to this kick and sub. The sub is two decibels higher on the fundamental than the kick. That's where I decided to go with at the end of this master. But they're very close. And this is why that low end has such a big cohesive together sound in the after version.
And that is the basis of when I'm doing stem mastering. If I want to like hit the levels of like a Skrillex or whatnot in terms of overall loudness, the kick and the sub need to be fucking precise. And I'm actually pretty happy TDR Infrasonics monitoring section is so damn accurate for doing that. Um, I didn't have that tool when I did this. I was using Insight and just sort of eyeing it and listening and eyeing it and tweaking back and forth till I got there. But I was within two decibels. And then you get that and then you add everything around it um, and you tweak around it. My main thing was getting these low perks to smack. So using knock here was really important to just get those transients to come out a little bit. And that's really the basis of getting this stem master together because everything else just fell in place. And yes, I'm doing quite a bit on the stereo bus with like diamond saturator, which I like to use for that, that te transient texture sort of thing I've been talking about. But mainly this is super aggressive mastering because we're working from stems. We're manipulating the balance quite obtusely. Um, and then we're going with. So these are range from subtle to super aggressive. But if you're really curious about super aggressive, like this stem mastering, I have a video where I walk through this session on every little detail, every plugin I use and how I took it from the before and after. So what I'm gonna do is click on the video. It's gonna pop up on the screen or there'll be a link in the description. You can watch that start to end, um, every detail of putting this STEM master together to go from A to B. And until next time, take care.